You're welcome to the Two Man Wall with Johnny Ward and Adam Russell. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about the championship and leagues one and two uh, in relation to how Adam's tips are going since the start of the season. But uh, it can't be going as well as your tips last week, Adam, particularly in the North London Derby. You absolutely nailed us. Yeah, well, I think those yeah, I'd seen the few people had nailed that one with the with the low score line. You knew that Spurs had set up, as, especially as soon as they got that early goal through Son that they would just obviously sit men behind the ball and soak up the game. And yeah, that's how it turned out. So yeah, good result for us. I think that was 9-2 to two at, at, when we tipped it up on Wednesday. And then... That was Kane to score and Spurs to win to nil. Yeah. And then we we, we had um, we had two check to score any time um, for West Ham against United, which he, he cropped up with the early goal. Um, so yeah, it was a good week for us. Hopefully we can pick a few more out this week as well. Yeah, that was a lovely shout. And obviously, you uh, you were heavy enough on Bruno Fernandes to score, but he was sacrificed for uh, ultimately a game in Leipzig, which um, went a bit pee tong for Man United. Yeah, now, all of a sudden, they're out of the Champions League. Yeah, it's always um, always a difficult one when you tip someone up to score and then they're benched and rested for the, for the week. But yeah, it didn't turn out too great for them. So, sure he'll sure he'll get me back on the team sheet this week to look out for him. I think I said I think I said he was printing money last week for him to score any time. You did so. printing counterfeit money as it turned out. Um, let's look at the championship though. And at the end of the show, we we'll go back to the Premier League for this uh, week's fixtures and. Uh, Chat a little bit about Cuevin Kelleher, who's doing so well for Liverpool. Some Irish interest at the club again. But at the start of the season, you tipped Watford 13 to 2. Um, I'm not going to quite say you're a judge because they're into 6 to 1 now, but uh, still bang there. Yeah, I still think they're there, they're there or thereabouts. It's so close um, at the top of the championship at the minute. There's only seven yeah. points separating the top half. And looking through the, the league, I think, it looks, I think anyone in that top half could potentially even go on and win it. Um, so I think there's definitely some value left in this market for the punters. Um, what we've seen over the last few weeks are the, the top teams all starting to beat each other as well and, and teams start to move around. Bournemouth have, have gone top. Um, they're currently leading the, the way, but they're, they're closely followed by Norwich and Watford. So I, I, I think I'm in with a shout. But yeah, there's definitely some value for the punters to go out left in this one. Yeah, um, I suppose the Brentford kind of market's uh, prominence has been interesting as well. They haven't started that well, but um, they're actually still only five to one as well. Yeah, the market seems to have, seems to have stuck with them despite the slow start. I wouldn't describe them normally necessarily as slow starters. I think they had an all right start last year, and um, I, yeah, I think they can come good. But I still think five to one for them to be to, to uh, as an outright winner is is too short when you look at some of the other. Um, contenders in there. I've picked out some of the bigger price ones. I think yeah. in the outright market, the terms are quarter odds for three places. So there's potentially um, some value in that. And of course, Star have also got um, an outright promotion market as well. So you can get hopefully get a bit of value in there as well. Um, Cardiff, interesting one, I think. Um, they're 22 to 1 in the outright and a 7 to 1 in the promotion um, market. And they've got a squad that has Premier League experience, the likes of Sol Bamba. Um, and they've also got some good good loan players in. They've got um, Shea Ojo, they've got Harry Wilson. Um, they beat Stoke 2-1 last night, who are also sort of in with a shout. Um, they beat Watford at the weekend, and they beat Huddersfield 3-0 the week before. And they've started to beat the teams around them, the teams that are going to be there or thereabouts. And ultimately, that's going to be the difference. Um, so I think they're an interesting shout. The other one, I thought, bigger price, maybe a bit more out there. 50 to 1 in the outright, 10 to 1 in the promotion market, Bristol City. Mm. Um, they've also got some Premier League experience in their squad, although they've bought it from elsewhere with the likes of Adrian Mariapa, Naki Wells, Chris Brunt, who's obviously got years of Premier League experience with West Brom, and also the experience of getting promotion with West Brom. So that could be important to them in the running, especially if you look, they might, they might want to be on a playoff run or whatever. But they've also got some really exciting young players and a young manager who um, has got some interesting ideas and, and is trying to get them to play um, the right way. Um, so I think, yeah, 50 to 1 in the outright, 10 to 1 in the promotion market. If you're looking for a bit of each way value, I think Bristol City could be a bit of an outside chart there. Yeah, interesting stuff, Adam. What with what, what Christmas coming and several months left in the season? It's a, it's a nice interest bet, particularly yeah, with I the... A, I don't think there's an outstanding contender this yeah. year. Which is what I think makes it interesting. I think there's the three teams that got relegated last year from the Premier League who have obviously up there at the minute but 
there doesn't seem to be one team that looks like they're going to run away with it. So I think, yeah, there's a few on it. Norwich, 7-2 to two outright. Um, evens for promotion. Bournemouth, top of the league at the minute, 9-4 to four outright. 4-6 four to six for promotion. But yeah, I'm going to stick with Watford. Like you said, 6-1. to one. Um, I think they've got the best squad in the league. They've got strength in depth. Um, and I think they've got enough to get the job done. So Manchester City have won on six of their last nine visits to Old Trafford. And I suppose a more interesting aspect of this is there, there isn't a crowd at the game. And Manchester United, for whatever reason, have been far better away from home in, in, in England, basically, uh, this season. But this is a strange one. This is a half-five game on Saturday. 31-10 to 10 United, same price to draw, 3-4 to four City. Um, and it's kind of one of them games that you'd imagine if Manchester United's very slim hopes of winning the league, they probably probably need to win but I, I just can't figure them out to be honest they just seem to be perpetually slow starters often they well in the second half didn't get away with it last night and um, maybe City coming into a bit of form is 3-4 to four going to be under pressure do you think? Yeah I think well I think it could be we talked about it last week it's an interesting one looking at the table now the, obviously United are at one point above City and we thought last week that City are title contenders and that United aren't but then we also talked about this resolve that this Oli side seems to have where they come from behind and they don't give up. They win matches from losing positions. Um, no team has won more points than them from losing positions this season. Obviously, beat mm. West Ham at the weekend after going behind. They won 15 points from losing positions. They even thought about it against Leipzig last night. They maybe needed to start 65 minutes earlier than they did, but they... They had a go, and that's yeah. I think that's an interesting characteristic of that team. It'll be interesting to see if they can develop on that. City again, it's a difficult one to call, like you said. But City have got the the recent form edge in terms of winning this fixture, um, but they've also lost five away games um, this calendar year, which is the most they've lost in it in a year under Pep. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's a difficult one to call. But my my head still says City will go there and get a result. Um, we talked a little bit last week about the North London derby and how derby games, you sort of throw the form book out the window. Um, so this one, I think I think that sort of applies there as well. I think it will be a hard-fought game, I think. Um, I, I think United will stick in a low block. They'll obviously be very wary of the, the threat that Man City pose going forward. So I think it could be an interesting game. Um, I picked a few out, I think. City to win 2-1. I saw the price was 7-1. to one. It was just a bit of a feeling. I think both teams will probably score in the game, um, but I don't think it'll be anything crazy in terms of goals. I just think it'll be a, a kind of classic hard-fought top-flight game. City to win, both teams to score. Sterling any time, that's 9-2. to two. I also had a look at Mares, but with Pep selection, you, you never know who's going to play and who's not, so it's difficult to, to pick in terms of any time goal scorers there, but Sterling usually seems to get the nod in these games. I think he's he's a pretty safe bet there in that one. But yeah, I think City will probably edge it. Yeah, just uh, an interesting game is Sheffield United going to Southampton. Uh, 19 points of a difference between the two teams. Southampton flying high in fifth. Sheffield United one point from 11 on XG and so forth. They, they should definitely be doing better than that. Um, but at the same time, they're actually only 15-4 to four to to win at Southampton. I suppose a more interesting game is um, Chelsea going to Everton. Jurgen Klopp rather mistressly calling them the, the favourites for the title. He obviously doesn't look at star sports betting, but this is another interesting one. To be fair, Adam, it's, it's hard enough to knock Chelsea at the moment. I'm impressed with the way they did it against Leeds and the circumstances as well. Yes, you're right. It's hard to knock them at the minute. They, they're doing everything right. Um I think particularly impressive has been how they've switched it on defensively and, and the amount of clean sheets they've kept recently. They kept four clean sheets in the last six Premier League games. Mm. Mendy's come in, he's made a, a real difference um, to how that defence feels. Um, and yeah, I think they're doing everything right. They've got, obviously, I think Pulisic coming back um, into fitness. That's going to be another boost. Um, Havertz has been out with COVID, so that's another option that's coming back for them. Um Obviously, Everton started the season of well. They've tailed off a bit. Um, Calvert Lewin still banging the goals in, but I'm gonna I'm gonna think I think Chelsea will get another clean sheet in this one. So I'm going yeah, Chelsea to win to nil. And obviously, Giroud is on fire at the minute. Mm -hmm. um, he's turned back the clock. It's like he's yeah, it's like he's 27 again. But yeah, he's uh, he can't stop him at the minute. Um, so him to score any time and Chelsea to win to nil six to one with Star Sports build a bet. I, um, I like that one.
Finally, the London Derby Spurs attempting three to four at Palace. You do like them to win by three goals here. This is an interesting shout at 17 to two, trusting the um, really banging form Kane and Song to uh, keep scoring pretty much. Yeah, to be honest, I was impressed with with Palace uh, last weekend, um, and it's not yeah, it's no slight on them that I'm that I'm backing Tottenham to win by three goals. I just think that Tottenham have had a couple of a run of games against City, Chelsea, and obviously Arsenal at the weekend, um, where they're obviously playing rivals and, and top six rivals. So I think in this one they might be able to just be a bit more expansive. Um, they'll probably have more possession. Uh, and yeah, I fancy them to to get a few goals and Tottenham to beat to beat Crystal Palace by by three goals of seventeen to two. So seventeen to two, and we can't but finish up on your beloved Bolton, who, uh, if I'm right, followed up a three goal uh, victory over Southend by scoring three again, but being beaten six three by Port Vale. What is going on? I didn't know you were going to put me on the spot like this. Well, there you go. We actually won five on the spin before that, and it's just so Bolton Wanderers to put together a nice run. Manager gets nominated for manager of the month, the old curse, and then yeah, six three at Port Vale against Port Vale at home. So yeah, it's an embarrassing one, but to be honest, being a Bolton fan in recent years, we've seen a few of those. We were beaten seven one at Accrington Stanley last season, um, and I can think of a few others. We were beaten heavily at Coventry a few years ago. So and unbeknownst to all of me, all of this, you've you've you said five in a row, so you've actually won six of sixteen, but five in a row up to twelfth, and just three points off the playoff spot at the moment. Yeah, again, it's congested in, in League mm. 2 as well. Um, in League 1, we picked Hull out at the start of the season and Hull looked like the, the clear favourites in League 1. So that looks to be a, another good pick from there. We obviously picked Salford out in League 2, who are kind of stuttering, but they're, they're in a better position than Bolton at the minute. It's likely that they'll probably bring in some more players in January as well and give themselves a real shot at it. But yeah, I think if we can put together a, a, another run where we win four or five games on the spin, then yeah, we'll be there or thereabouts. But We've got, to, we've got to learn how to defend first. Top man, Adam. Thank you, Johnny. Have a good one. Yeah, enjoy the sport of the weekend. Obviously, enjoy the uh, Manchester Derby and uh, enjoy having a perusal of the championship table and uh, some of the bets on offer there as well. Remember, it is a quarter of the odds, uh, the first three, if you fancy a bet on that outright. And I uh, will talk to you next week for more of the two-man wall. Mm-hmm.